So to review, the pacemaker, the atrioventricular node, sets the tone. Impulses are collected by the atrioventricular bundle and delivered down through the Purkinje fibers. Now, by having two separate events, atrial contraction followed by ventricular contraction, we essentially allow blood to move in a very effective one-way circuit. In fact, this is so effective that your heart pumps about 2,000 gallons of blood in this way every day. From the heart, blood is going to enter a series of arteries. Arteries are defined as structures that carry blood away from the heart. That A in artery and that A in away are great clues. As blood flows away from the heart through the series of arteries, specific tissues are supplied by smaller and smaller branches. In order for the heart to operate most effectively, there has to be pressure in these vessels at all times. Your cardiovascular system is a closed loop. At no time are you losing large amounts of fluid, or at no time are you gaining large amounts of fluid. Let's talk just for a moment about vessels again. As we said, arteries carry your blood away from the heart, and there is a difference in size between many of these vessels. The largest tubes, and you can think of them as simply hollow tubes, are known as arteries. Arteries branch into smaller hollow tubes, just like the branches of a tree. As you move out from the trunk, you get consecutively smaller and smaller. The smaller branches are known as arterioles. Arterioles finally branch into the smallest pathways in the system. The smallest pathways are known as capillaries, and they will be special for several reasons. First of all, capillaries are going to be found at sites of exchange in the body. When a tissue needs oxygen, or when a tissue needs to give off carbon dioxide, in order to facilitate that exchange, we must rely on small tubes that things move easily into and that things move easily out of. So there are many different sites of exchange in the body. The list of capillary networks is literally endless. After exchange occurs, usually the good things in blood, and I use that term loosely, the good things like glucose and oxygen have been delivered by the cardiovascular system to those tissues. Although the most of the work is done at this point, wastes build up in every single cell of your body at every moment of the day. In addition to delivering the nutrients and oxygen, your cardiovascular system also specializes in delivering wastes away. So if we start at a site of exchange, carbon dioxide, a gas, is dissolved in blood and it continues to go back up to the heart. So this is kind of the second half of the loop. From a capillary network, we're going to have, excuse me, capillaries will merge to form venules, which are smaller tubes that carry blood towards the heart, and venules will merge to form larger structures called veins, which eventually end up leading back to the heart. So kind of to review, away from the heart we have arteries and arterioles, Arterioles then branch to form capillaries. After exchange occurs, capillaries will merge to form venules. Venules will grow into larger structures called veins, and veins will ultimately be responsible for delivering blood back to the heart. One of the unique um, attributes of blood vessels, most of them by the way, is that they do contain a little bit of muscle. So we've got miles and miles of tubes in our body and because they contain muscle, they have the ability to change size. Well, you ask, why would a blood vessel want to change size? It's often advantageous to send more blood through an artery for some emergency, and it becomes necessary in case of an injury to send less blood, for example, through an artery. Smooth muscle, the type of muscle that's found in these tissues, has a couple things that are sort of similar or in common with cardiac cells. First of all, the smooth muscle in your blood vessels is non-voluntary. That is, you can't consciously think about smooth muscle and cause them to contract. Secondly, smooth muscle cells are also autorhythmic. That means they can generate some of their own action potentials, and most importantly, they can carry those potentials through tissue to adjacent cells. So, we've got this closed system, and we can increase and decrease the size of the tubes that carry blood around from the heart, or excuse me, from the heart back to the heart. Last but not least, we have to focus just for a moment on capillaries. We always find capillaries at sites of exchange because they're extremely small and delicate. 
Cardiac tissue um, is fairly robust in many cases, except when we're talking about capillaries. These are going to be small microscopic tubes that consist of only one thin layer of cells. Because they're so small and delicate, they're potentially damaged very easily, and we have to be careful what we do with them, but because they're so small and thin, they readily facilitate a process called diffusion. Diffusion will be defined as the movement of material from areas of high concentration towards areas of low concentration. For example, when tissue's oxygen um, arrives, oxygen diffuses readily out of these small tissues. When a tissue builds up carbon dioxide and needs to get rid of it, carbon dioxide readily diffuses, moves from areas of high concentration to areas of low concentration into blood vessels, and then carbon dioxide can begin its journey back towards the heart. So what we see is, to wrap things up, we've got two basic components. We've got a heart that's basically a series of four chambers that work um, in a coordinated fashion to pump blood out of the body. When blood leaves the body, we've got arteries and arterioles that carry blood towards tissues. Capillaries are unique because they're always found at sites of nutrient and waste exchange. And last but not least, we've got venules which become veins that carry blood back up to the heart.